Okay, I am recording this at the end of the video. You might be able to see a couple things uh, that have changed, but you know, I'm not gonna spoil too many things. Um, I do just wanna say this is a shorter video, not for lack of playtime. I probably spent 15, maybe 20 hours uh, recording this episode, but it turned into probably 45 minutes worth of video. Um, that's just the way it is. There was a ton of micro crafting, a ton of circuit crafting, and we're trying to push our way into the MV age right now and automate, you know, things like these Coke ovens. I do also want to add that, uh, hey, you know, I, I know, I, I know most, uh, most YouTubers do this or a lot of them do it. And I find it super annoying, but I know all of you who are watching this series right now, and it's very, very high, uh, viewership for my channel. Over a thousand people have watched every episode so far. Like 60% of you have not subscribed to the channel. So like, do that. I know, I know you're watching the videos. Just like, subscribe, help me get a thousand. Help me get some pocket change. And enjoy the video. Hello everybody, this is Andy, and welcome to episode four of Greg Tech New Horizons. Um, it's actually Saturday right now, so I have quite a few recording sessions to get done over the next day, but I'm also entirely free for the next day, so I have all the time in the world to get this video made. Um, I do want to get a main couple things done in this video though, and though that is going to be the electric blast furnace and this structure right here which some of you might realize what it is, uh, but some of you may not. It's actually going to be a multi-farm. Uh, these right now are just cobblestone blocks uh, that I chiseled to make look like a decent looking cobblestone block. Um, this is where all of the farm blocks are gonna go. And then up here is where uh, the multi-farm will actually work. Um, I need to, you know, till it and all that kind of stuff. But for now, it's getting a little too dark to actually see anything because I haven't lit this place up yet. Uh, so I need to sleep. I did also expand our platform quite a bit. As you can see, we'll probably use up some of the space in this video. And uh, we're not going to get quite towards the, whatever it's called, logistics pipes today. But we'll get decently close. Uh, we will definitely break into the MVH. And uh, hopefully we will be able to have some automation going as soon as possible. Um, I need to fill these guys in, but I think I'm actually running a little low on cobblestone. Um, I actually might be almost entirely out of cobblestone, so I can't actually do that right now. Uh, so first things first, let's go. And do I really need to mine? What is first things first? First things first might be to make the carpenter. Actually, I've changed my mind. First things first is the basic circuit assembling machine. This is going to be required to get us uh, easier circuits and get us into the MVH. So let's make this bad boy. It's going to require six, seven LV circuits. So I think I'm entirely out of LV circuits. Nope, I got two left. So I'm going to need to make five more, which actually should be somewhat doable. Let me see what resources I already have, and I will come back with the stuff we need to craft. Oh yeah, you also may have noticed I pulled down this house. It's not really what I think I want to go for in this area. I think I want to go for a much more factory vibe. That's why I expanded the platform so much. Um, because, yeah, we're not going to have little houses. We're going to have one huge factory where everything just kind of functions together. Uh, my favorite thing that was mentioned in the comments of the last episode, you don't actually need these tanks with pumps on them to pull things into the cutting machines. Say you had a bucket of water and you wanted to put a bucket of water in here, you could just right click on the machine and it would put the bucket of water into the machine now. That is one of the best quality of life features that helps this version of Greg Tech so much because it's just so obnoxious if you don't have it. Um, do I have any of this stuff? No, I don't. Uh, one of the main reasons I want to get this multi-farm set up actually is because of the uh, resin. Uh, resin is obnoxious to get right now and you need so, so much of it. And, uh, you know, I don't like doing things by hand. I like doing things automatically if that isn't clear by the fact that I play mod packs for, uh, for fun. In order to make my first couple diodes, I'm also going to need some gallium. I never actually made that at gallium. We need to electrolyze some sphalerite dust. So there's the arsenic. 
uh, and there is, I believe, a 20% chance per two Sphalerite Dust to get a piece of Gallium. We're going to get a bunch of Zinc, too, which we can uh, not probably do much with, probably. Uh-oh. We're out of power. Uh, what's running? Wait, why am I out of power? Am I out of steam? No. Excuse me? I don't know what happened. I was only using two machines at the time, so... Oh, wait. Is it connected properly? It is. It shouldn't be having any problems. And it should be auto-exporting quite easily. What's going on here? Um, that's weird. The machine's functioning just fine, except it's not exporting properly. Anyways, we have our first couple tiny piles of gallium. I need nine to get one gallium thing for the quest, and then we can mix that into gallium arsenide, which has to be done in the mixer, and it takes 15 seconds, which is a little obnoxious, but I will live. Uh, let me put the other sphalerites in there. I just need to finish one more craft. And, wow, I'm getting really lucky with these. And we should be able to make some diodes, which is just... Uh, not fine annealed, probably just fine copper, and a little bit of glass. In the meantime, I've also finished my last terribly obnoxious craft of these LV circuits. Uh, we can craft them by hand or very soon in the circuit assembler, and we will also get better recipes for this once I have the a little bit more infrastructure, a couple more machines, and we can set up, you know, some some small little baby, like, kind of semi-automation for the electronic circuits, and then we can begin making some of these. Uh, these can be made in the circuit assembler for slightly cheaper, it looks like. Uh, oh, wait, you need the good circuit board? No, you always need the good circuit board, which requires phenolic circuit boards, which requires refined glue, and some wood pulp, which is actually not all that hard because guess what I actually just started doing? Uh, making a little bit of refined glue light, light right here. Um, so yeah, that comes in handy. You know what? Actually, I think since this refined glue can't be made in uh, an ex a fluid extractor, um, I'm, I'm probably going to make a second assembling machine. So we'll have one assembling machine here for the fluid extracting recipes and another one over like maybe here to pull in the refined glue and make circuit boards and stuff out of. That should be useful. Let me wait. Refined glue in assembling recipes. It is 52 of them, so it'll definitely come in handy down the line. And I guess this is a cheaper recipe for water tanks, huh? Oh, yes, we also use refined glue in the resistor recipes, which are super handy. Wooden fluid pipe, don't need to do that. We, we will use refined glue throughout the pa pack. Ooh, brain tech, aerospace, advanced reinforced duct tape. This stuff is pretty cool, actually. We'll probably make a bunch of it throughout the pack. Yeah, having a refined, refined glue assembling machine is going to come in handy. So let's do the grinding. Get the refined, or get the uh, second assembling machine up. I have just enough circuits. I need seven for the circuit assembler, and I need four for the second basic assembling machine. So we should be good to go there. Uh, and I need to wait for my gallium to finish up anyways. I, I'm almost there, but I still have a... Uh, oh, actually, I'm there. Uh, let's finish this quest really quickly, actually. Come on. Push. Okay, I'm just going to take it. Uh, I need to wait for these to finish up so I can get a little bit more arsenic, and uh, then we can make true, true uh, diodes. Was that what I was going for? I don't know what I was going for. And there we go. The gallium arsenide dust is done. And I can get an extra gallium right here. Stop being angry. Uh, that will help greatly, actually. Um, so I need a some refined glue cans. I haven't made cans yet, though. Uh, and I need to make some diodes. Ooh, polyethylene pulp. That's really, that's the like good stuff. Um, what is this? We don't have HV stuff yet. And thermal centrifuge. I already have one of those, actually, don't I? Is this a thermal centrifuge? Yeah, will you complete the quest if I knock you down? How do I open my backpack? I don't think I have a hotkey for it in this playthrough. 
And there we go. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, does this actually... It does actually give us gallium if we use crushed zinc ore in it. Though I don't think I have a good way of getting zinc ore. Only the little crushed things from the, uh, from the nether. So it's not very useful. All right. So I've taken a a couple minutes, uh, actually it's been a couple hours because I had to go run, and done a little bit of crafting. And we have two good electronic circuits, which are apparently not a quest. Oh, it's because I never did the glue quest. I will force complete some of these eventually. Um, and then, now that we have this, I should have everything I need to make the circuit assembling machine. All right, perfect. That's definitely not a quest because I uh, haven't gotten there yet because I haven't completed the glue quest. Uh, do I have a bunch of glue in here? I do have a bunch of glue in here. I could probably complete that right now. Yep. Uh, the beauty of the new update of Greg Tech. And now I still don't have this one. I'm going to force complete this one. Now that I've got this uh, circuit assembling machine, I'll probably, for the meantime, because I don't want to make another fluid extractor at the moment, uh, just replace these two with each other from time to time. This will sit here for, I don't know, a couple hours for me, probably two minutes for you, maybe. Um, and we should be in a good place. One other thing that I did while I was waiting for you to come back was I tested the speed of the basic forge hammer, the LV forge hammer, and it turns out it can keep up with this uh, steam grinder, even if this grinder is processing um, nether ores, which have double the, don't go in there, double the output of normal ores. So it can definitely keep up with normal ores. I'm going to change the input and the output. So the input's over here and the output is over here. So we can push into this thing. And since we determined last time that this thing doesn't actually push, we're going to use a conveyor with some tin item pipes on a uh, into the forge hammer. I don't know what I was going for there. So what we should see is we should see if I put this copper ore in here, it'll begin to process here in 30 seconds. Well, 30 seconds as soon as it realizes it has input. Oh, wait, um, I haven't whacked this guy with a soft mallet since I reformed the multi-block. So we do need to do that and whack and he begins running and he has enough steam and he's not going to avoid my inputs this time. Once we get to 30 seconds here, we should, I don't know when this thing, how this thing decides it sends the items, but it sends like one stack every, every 20 seconds, which is way, way, way fast enough. Um, but yeah, we should see the items come into here in just a moment and then get shoved into here. And then for now, they'll just get shoved into the chest. So this will be basic ore processing. I want to get some ore washers set up here too. Um, I will need a little bit more of these LV steam turbines and that will require a ton of our steam. We'll probably need to upgrade these pipes, but there it's just gone. And, and there we go. Okay, perfect. It does work correctly. I've set the uh, conveyor right and this will just run make me more copper i need more copper because i'm actually running incredibly low and off we go into the twilight forest once again not to fight anything not to fight any bosses do any progression here it's time to find a nickel vein because i think our next goal is actually going to be to get the electric blast furnace crafted up it's going to be quite a bit of work but once we have it done, we'll have a much faster production of steel. I think I'm actually just going to entirely skip making more blast or the basic blast furnaces because they're just, you know, they're slow is a light way of putting it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to do a little bit of mining and I'll be right back. And here we go. Not actually all that long later. This is a nickel vein. Garnierite and coboltite are the signs of a nickel vein. I believe this actually smelts directly into nickel. Yeah, and there's actual nickel ore further down in the in, in the ore chunk as well. It actually goes quite a far bit down. And there you go, you see a little bit of nickel. I'm going to go ahead, hmm, red garnet. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and basically mine this entire thing out and shove it through our ore processing system and once we have a little little bit of it done and I can get smelting um, 
some invar to get crafting the electric blast furnace up a little bit i will be right back i don't know if it's just bad luck or a feature of greg tech new horizons but every time i find a nickel vein it's the most obnoxious thing to mine out in the entire world there's caves all over the place and you, you can never like mine straight for more than like 20 seconds there's always some dirt in your way this is actually a, a uh you know a uh, uh an outlier right now the fact that i got to mine out all of that straight insane felt incredible and of course there was dirt right there as soon as i started saying something about it um yeah I've got a decent amount of nickel. I'm going to mine out a whole nother layer probably of this stuff and make sure I uh, find the edge. I think this is actually the edge right here. And uh, yeah, you know, I said I'd be back when I had some stuff smelted up, but I wanted to complain a little bit because this pack takes a lot out of you. Since I'm actually going to be ore doubling this, it doesn't require quite as much mining as I otherwise would have done. Um, I think nickel... I didn't even get that much nickel. And I got some bentonite? Where did that come from? I'm not going to throw it away. I mean, it's just one piece, but I'm not going to throw it away. Um, garnierite, is this... It just turns into nickel. So let's crush up all of this Garnierite, and I think I'll save the rest of it. Penteltite, uh, that turns into Cobalt, which could be useful. Yeah, we'll do that, and we should be able to just let this run. I'll grab this copper and smelt it up, Ooh. Uh, and I'll be right back. All right, there we go, the Electric Blast Furnace Controller, and I already have seven of the heatproof casings. The input bus and hatch and the output bus. So loud, so obnoxious. Um, I can make one of the other ones right now. I think it's this, the muffler hatch. Uh, maybe I can manage the maintenance hatch, which is just all of this stuff. Screwdriver, wrench, cutters. Let me do that really quickly. And there we go. There is that. And now I got to put all these in here painstakingly because you can't shift click them back into the chest but that's quite all right it should have more invar being messed up just like this and that should actually be enough invar to finish us off pretty good here i think i need four mer more so i'm gonna need to file and make another file uh i have some steel perfectly fine and I'm crafting on camera again because I have no idea why. Um, I'm just kind of showing you guys, I guess, the amount of stuff that goes into every single thing here. And it's quite a bit. It's tedious, but, you know, you've got to do it. And it can be quite fun. Okay, there's all the Envar plates. Wrench, hammer, and the four more heatproof casings. The quest only wants 11 in multi-block goals so hopefully that'll just be enough and it says we've gotten most of the things so far the ones that are left though are the really hard ones so we should probably get started on Krupa nickel coils as soon as possible and the all the energy hatches are quite a bit of crafting as well not hard crafting just you know i have to make some lubricant which means i'll have to distill some stuff make a distillery can i make a distillery oh no can I make a distillery? Okay. I can make the distillery. The brewing machine is the one that I don't like. Wait, is distillery a reasonable way to make lubricant? Hold on. Or am I going to have to get... Wait, I can't even get into Thalmcraft yet. Uh, yeah. Brewing machine doesn't... Or brewing stand doesn't have a recipe. Because it needs the Thalmcraft recipe. So, this isn't an option. I guess distillery is the way we have to get. But let's get working on the Cupra Nickel Coil Blocks first because the crafting for these things will take a significant amount of time. Actually, I should probably start smelting up some Cupra Nickel too, which is, it's just copper and nickel. Um, so it's not that bad, but you know, you do need a lot of it. Um, so what we need to make Cupra Nickel Coil Blocks is either aluminosilicate wool, which would be obnoxious to craft up, um, but you can actually make mica insulator foil entirely at LV. Uh, for some reason, I thought before it required an MV step, but it doesn't seem that way. Maybe it used to be that way. I don't know. Uh, but we need to make the mica insulator soil, which foil, which requires a bending machine. Easy. We have that. 
we need an alloy smelter with silicon dioxide. Easy, we can make silicon dioxide quite simply. We need mica-based sheets, which come from forming, pressing, mica-based pulp, and asbestos. We have a million pieces of, of asbestos that we're not using. Mica-based pulp needs a mixer with mica dust and sticky resin. Mica dust comes from the mica ore, which is found in kyanite veins. Uh, this is, wait. Oh, this is overworld. Okay, yes. I'm pretty sure I have kyanite veins. Let me check my my uh, journey map, but I, I'm pretty sure I have a kyanite vein. Okay, so fun thing. I just spent a million years explaining that process of getting um, the Kubernetes coil blocks from ky or kyanite vein from mica. Um, I have found no kyanite veins, just kaolinite veins. So yeah, I'm going to go search for a kyanite vein, which is apparently incredibly rare. And this is all because I don't want to use the aluminosilicate wool pro recipe because it sounds terrible. So let me go do a little more prospecting and I'll be right back. And uh, here we are, everybody. This is a kyanite vein. Uh, there's probably some mica around here somewhere. I haven't dug it out yet. My inventory is entirely full. My miner's backpacks are entirely full of small things I picked up along the way. This is what my um, my prospecting thing looks like. So initially we had 81 things here. I prospected all over here, up through here in the places where there wasn't water all of this and then was coming over here to start lines this way and this is the first kyanite vein that i came across i almost assuredly have one of every single type of vein in the overworld uh i got found some tantalite veins which will come in handy once we get into uh ender io i'm just glad it's over it's been like an hour i know it was like a second for you guys it's been like 45 minutes to an hour looking for this and straight up, as if the world is playing a cruel joke on me, I fell into a lava pit directly below the kyanite vein. I survived because there's the water right there, but come on, dude. You're just playing games. This sucks. And you know what else just actually came to my attention? I didn't spend 45 minutes looking for this stuff. It's been like two hours. Bro, I mean, like, I guess we're set. Like, I probably never need to find another kyanite vein ever. And if I do, I'm just going to lose my mind. But come on, dude. Come on. Like, like, really? Like, straight up while I was looking for this thing, I, I checked to see if it actually existed. And there were forum posts of people saying how they... Did I not bring steel with me? Oh, my God. Uh, I guess I'm just done mining. Um, there are forum posts of people saying how they, they stumbled across multiple kyanite veins early in their playthrough. So they just used this as a source of considerite instead of just finding a tin vein. And like tin veins aren't super common, but um, let me remind you. Okay. Um, I'm working on getting to this mica, mica insulator foil. I'm actually doing pretty well. I got to the mica insulator sheets and I realized, realized I, um, I think I quadrupled the recipe. So I'm just going to be in a really good place whenever I need to make more of these, um, blast furnaces. So that's kind of fun. Like, I don't know. I've probably saved myself time in this whole thing, like in the long run. But for now, it's uh, 120 in the morning and I just want to go to bed. All right. Um, this seems somewhat unbelievable to me, but I've gathered everything, including the Cooper nickel coils. And uh, by the way, I didn't four times the recipe. I like three times it somehow. I don't know. Um, Except for the four lubricant cells I need to make the LV energy hatches. This thing is just very, very slow. I'm like halfway there and I need to also steal this um, pump in order to finish the craft as well. But I have everything else set up right here in, a, a, in order to get that done. And what I'm thinking is since we have just a little bit of room here, 
this should be good enough to get our blast furnace going. So I'm going to put that there. We'll put the two LV energy hatches there. We'll have output bus on that side. Uh, yeah, we'll put it on that side. Input bus on this side. Input hatch over here. Might as well. Uh, maintenance hatch can go over here. And then we can begin placing some heat proof casings. Um, I also have the muffler hatch, which we're going to have to place on top. Uh, heat proof casings should not go here because that's going to be an LV energy hatch. And we put the coils just like this. I know I've said this before. I know I said this last time we made the blast furnace, but the the blast furnace coils in this version are just gorgeous. I love them so much. It's not the texture pack. That's just what they look like in 1.7. And uh, good on you, Greg. You made something beautiful. There, muffler hatch right there, top middle. There needs to be a block above it in order for it, for it to function correctly. As you can see, it actually looks like it's made out of invar. That's one of the things that the texture pack does. Um, it, it makes everything look like the blocks that it's made out of, like this made it looks like bronze. These all look like steel machines, which is kind of gorgeous. And all the MV machines will look blue because they're made out of aluminum. Um, as you can see, it has problems because one, the structure is incomplete, but two, we have to repair it. And oh my goodness, this is very fancy looking. And here we go. A solid 10 minutes later, there are two... LV energy hatches, and that is the quest completed for the EBF. And there weren't even that many, many fireworks, so you may have noticed I did have to actually move this thing over. I calculated it out, and it turns out we were lo losing about one amp too much in order to run the aluminum recipe. So now it's here until it can get red redstone alloy i think it's called redstone alloy cables which are the lossless lv cables uh we will have to have this here i think in this version these things do have to face towards the wires um actually i probably do have to do this oh geez this is gonna be a mess all right there we go all connected up had to break a couple things but that's perfectly fine let's close it off there close it off there and the multi-block structure should form okay perfect and what we should see is that there are a bunch of dumb stuff things in here that we need to handle um but i don't think we actually need to handle them this time because we can either get three tier tier two loot bags which i don't particularly care for or we can get one of these brain tech tapes which will allow us to resolve all problems with the machine instantly so yeah, it also gives you this cool little, little, uh, I don't know, visual on the, on the machine. So that's cool. Um, basically, we are ready to make aluminum. Should I make some right now? I could, I could feasibly make some right now. I might have to go chop down some wood really quickly because I'm, I'm running a little low in here. Uh, but then let's make some aluminum, why don't we? Do I have, I do have aluminum around here somewhere. I'm going to need to make some more steam turbines because I had to steal the one that was over here powering this basic forge hammer, but we have four of them here. That's all I've made so far. Um, I can support six right now with my current production. Um, so yeah, if I put this in here, we should produce enough power to have no issues producing some aluminum. I am going to probably have to whack it with a soft mallet, which I have one in here. Perfect. And it said disabled it's looking at this steel fluid pipe though so it's not seeing what i want it to see uh this is just a terrible place for this thing uh machine machine processing enabled it hasn't started yet but maybe it'll figure it out in a second that it has aluminum in here come on come on figure it out bud you know what, this one's actually on me. I'm tired enough that I just quite literally can't read, and I'm sure you can hear it in my voice, but it does need a program circuit of one in order to begin running, and might have just voided, might have just voided that. That would be unfortunate. Uh, turn the power on, and did it, yeah, it did just void one of my aluminum. That's super obnoxious. It voided another one of my aluminum. Wait, what's going on? Turns out you actually need to hook up steam turbines in order for them to produce power, but I don't know if that was the issue per se. Um, I feel like it shouldn't have turned off that fast, but let's try turning it on again. And it's going to take 65 seconds. And it looks like it's actually working this time, so that was probably the issue. 
the main thing I think we're going to see is that we can't actually quite keep up with steam production for four of these. They take 1,600 liters per tick and, or per second, and we can only transfer 4,800 liters per second. Actually, wait, we're doing fine. Did you shut off again? You shut off again. Okay, not going to worry about this right now. And I'm also going to stop voiding my aluminum. So that is the end of this recording session. It's very long. It, it was probably like a seven hour recording session, but we've gotten uh, at least one good thing done. We kind of set up some more processing, kind of, maybe, kind of. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully we can get this farm running so I don't have to chop trees manually anymore because, ugh, I just want to automate stuff. All right, it's the next morning. I'm sure I have morning voice, but I've just done some chores in the in the game, not in the house. My chores are all done in house, I promise. Um, but I needed to make some more circuits, get my steel cooking again, and uh, that's about it, actually. Uh, I did throw a couple of the farm blocks that I've gotten from loot bags over there. So we just need to make the farm gearbox and a bunch of these farm blocks. I should now have everything I need to make that. Oh, I do need to begin cooking up my uh, nether quartz again to get some lithium because I'm going to try and make lithium batteries. In order to make battery alloy, I actually do need some antimony, which I believe pretty much only comes from Stibnite, uh, which is in the tetrahedrite vein that I found a long, long time ago. So I'm going to mine this thing up just a little bit, probably not too much because I, I don't know. I've done a lot of mining this episode. I feel like, well, I haven't done a lot of mining. I've done a lot of prospecting this episode, but it feels like mining. So I'm going to do the bare minimum. And does that mean that's the bare minimum? I think I need to do slightly more than that. Okay, here we go. The basic canning machine. I've got my Stibnite, or whatever it's called, uh, being processed up here. Looks like it's... Mm. I don't have a forge hammer right now. I'm going to have to use this forge hammer from this place. All right, so I did a little bit more configuring. There are battery buffers back here now. And as you can see, they... Ooh, maybe I didn't let this one fill up all the way. Whatever. Uh, I just... I've made seven pieces of aluminum so far. I need two more, and those are being smelted up right now to unlock the MV quest line. The first thing we want to make in the MV quest line is the advanced electrolyzer. But before we get there, I think we should make some of this potent stuff. Um, I don't know if that's exactly how you say it, but it's how I'm going to say it. We need a, I'm going to make two and a half stacks of this stuff. So I need a stack of bronze, a stack of lead, half stack of tin, all in dust form. And I'm running low on tin. Good thing I found like eight tin veins when I was uh, looking for the kyanite. All right, I just collected these two aluminum and that should complete this quest right here and it opens up one more quest the low voltage transformer we're going to need this to transform our power from lv into mv and uh get some machines running like i said we will probably just directly connect it up to this and i'm going to need to make a couple of the circuits all right so this actually isn't that hard of a recipe it just takes a little bit of micro crafting so there is the carpenter and then once I have the carpenter, I'm going to need a little bit of molten redstone in it and uh, these things. So I'm going to need to make some coils, another tank, but I can do that really quickly because we're going to need the thermionic fabricator in order to make the, these guys? Yeah, these guys. Okay, so you can set the carpenters or basically any RF consuming machine directly against these Gragtech wires in this pack. Um, they convert directly in between each other. So as you can see, I have most things for the recipe in here. This becomes a valid recipe, and once I put this in there, it should begin crafting and consume all of the items. You need the work table up here. This is like the item that becomes this along with this stuff, and then a fluid for most of the carpenter recipe recipes. Uh, do I actually need a fluid for, yeah, we need creosote oil. Interesting. So there's our thermionic fabricator. Um, I think the carpenter is going to stay there for now. The thermionic fabricator actually makes its own fluid in the form of putting sand in here. Once it heats up, it will turn that directly into liquid gas or glass. What am I saying? Um, 
So I'm gonna need a couple of farm gearboxes. Doesn't look like there's anything fancy. I'll probably do the stone bricks version. Uh, that. And farm blocks will also be the stone bricks version, which is right here. All right, a ton of microcrafting later, but I'm finally getting the thermionic fabricator going to make the two sets of bronze electron tubes that I need. As soon as it reaches this point, it should melt the sand and begin the craft. I think you can also just shove glass into here, but... I don't really want to do that. That would require me to move my fluid extractor and all that. Nah, this thing can melt its stuff itself. I think it I think it melts its stuff itself. Come on. Get there, buddy. Okay, yeah, there it goes. And it just melted all of it. And it completes the two bronze electron tube crafts. There we go. And I'm gonna invalidate this recipe because we want to make a bunch of these appetite rods as well. I think I want to make 16 crafts of this for a total of 32 appetite electron tubes, which means I'm actually exactly where I want to be. I have everything I need to make this craft. I just need to make these appetite rods into the long rods using a hammer. And let me just tell you, this this episode is, has included an incredible amount of micro crafting, and it might be a shorter one because the you know, it's just been so much micro-crafting, but hopefully you'll see the progress. I'm also just now finishing off this potent stuff, the potent fluid pipes. Uh, I, they don't, I don't think, show their backflows, but I need to disable the input from the front end of each pipe as well. And I'll just go back and make sure it says input disabled and not something different throughout the entire chain here because I don't want to mess this one up and here we go our first couple of farm blocks I guess these farm blocks do require stone bricks so not our first couple of farm blocks blocks I was gonna do this eventually anyways because I want to finish decorating this thing with stone bricks underneath as you can see it's kind of filled in but not all the way um, that village from before from earlier in the series. I was just gonna go there and I was gonna steal all of their stone bricks. The wall that they very graciously put up for me to tear down. It was, it's quite, it's quite a beautiful structure and I'm gonna get rid of it. And if you don't remember, this is the village I was talking about. Our mining area or our main mining area is right over there. This guy has a big wall and uh, I'm just gonna rip it right out. And here we go. Now our first farm blocks wait farm block oh creosote oil yeah and here we go now we're making our first farm blocks and they take 500 creosote each which means i'll get 16 crafts out of this which means i'll need to fill it up one more time but i can actually yeah i'll just i'll finish up all the farm block crafts first before we do the gear box and here is the farm gear box it will make two of them and I didn't quite get my ratios correct. I think I lost some copper plates along the way somehow to turn into copper casings, but that's perfectly fine. Uh, I have over 100. The size farm I'm doing requires approximately 100 farm blocks. So there we go. And now I should just be able to head over there and set some stuff up. I'll pull this into my inventory, and we do want to invalidate this recipe because if we don't, it'll continue to use power. Okay. Okay. So I did fill in the entire underside here, and I need some food of some sort. That's not very good food, but I'll eat it. And then I can just kind of break out all of these cobblestone blocks, replace them with farm blocks. I'll put the or the gearbox right there, I think. This is where we're going to input RF. Uh, actually, I should probably put the gearbox on this side then. So I can input RF as close to where my RF is coming from as possible. The way we're going to manage this is we're going to use the lossless redstone alloy cables and just run a huge line over here. Um, I don't know how much power this thing's going to take. I hope not more than like two or three amps of LV because if it takes more than that, it's going to be a slight issue. Um, but we can upgrade our power soon anyways. It'll require me to upgrade my pipes over there once again from the potent to something more. But... 
we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get to it we now have since we have the electric blast furnace an easy way of getting steel so we can probably craft up especially once i have the lossless pipes just like a thousand pieces of steel no issue and if i've made this guy correctly i believe it'll show up on this layer right here there should be a band that goes all the way around the farm and it does look like we have made this guy correctly. Now, if we open this, we'll see farm controls. We don't necessarily want um, Arboretum. I don't remember what type we want. Maybe it's a managed farm? I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of looking up there. And unfortunately, I regret to inform you, I think this is the end of the episode. Um, I've accomplished the electric blast furnace. We have the multi-farm built, but non-functional. Um, we need to do some work before we can actually get this thing running properly. And I just don't really have much more time and much more sanity to work on this. I think next episode is going to be a infrastructure episode. We're going to get that thing up and running entirely. We'll maybe get some LV machines automated and then we'll try and jump into the MV age and make a couple stacks of aluminum the redstone alley cables and all of that good stuff huh, interesting a lot of quest rewards i still haven't claimed from various ages but yeah as you can see this is all hooked up we can make the MV machine hole should we want to but i will uh entirely leave that off until the next episode the let's go ahead and talk about what we have to do in MV before we can get into HV and get into proper automation using logistic pipes. Um, so we're going to need a lot of MV machines first off. Um, well, not like a lot. We'll need probably a handful, maybe like 10, 15 um, of various types and quantities. Uh, we will want to get oil up and running for a better fuel source. Um, it's much more efficient than steam. Our steam will be infinite. It will provide us a couple amps of MV at the end of the day or uh, in in some capacity but the oil will be much much more energy dense and useful um the main challenge of the mv age is to get polyethylene fully automate polyethylene and make the hv circuits in order to make um you know everything required to make stainless steel and to get into the hv age which is our main main goal i want to get there as soon as possible because I think once we get stuff automated using logistic pipes, uh, one, we'll be able to very easily switch over to applied energistics when we have the power to do so, um, and two, it will just save so much time for me. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, maybe leave a like or something. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.